theme here, you talked about the CBSA's plan uh, moving forward. So perhaps you can start by giving us an, an, an update as to, to what the plan has been uh, as a response to, to the Auditor General's recommendations. Sure, thank you. Um, so we've made 22 commitments. Um, I had uh, commissioned an internal audit as well, and that's underway, and um, that, that's also informing commitments uh, or, or giving rise to commitments to address some of the gaps in the processes that existed in the department. Um, so I can group it into a few uh, categories. One is training and guidance. Um, it needs to be ongoing. We have... Uh, I, I required um, retraining of executives and um, managers with delegated authority, and we continue to put out uh, improved guidance. Um, quality assurance and controls, uh, our second line of defense, as it were. I don't want to keep finding about gaps through our audits. That's an expensive way to find out that we don't have coverage and uh, that our documentation isn't in order. Conflict of interest, I, uh, I indicated um, that we've also done some work on that, both on the side of contractors and employees. Um, organizational changes, so I've mentioned a few times because it is quite significant in terms of the operations of the department, which is contracts going through one by one to a senior review committee. Um, that's giving rise to a lot of discussions about whether we even need contracts in some cases. Um, reprioritizing what we need to do and then bolstering the capacity of our internal procurement team. It's increased by 20%. Credit to that team that the attrition rate has decreased um, to 7% from 35%. So we have a very engaged and knowledgeable team that's fanned out across the organization to support other, dep uh, other um, divisions and sectors in their procurements. And then um, improving our, our information management practices. So um, the policy is quite clear on documents of business value. I don't think there's business value in having you know, 18 emails back and forth versus um, decision documents that are clear and can be found with all of the other relevant documents, be it in a procurement file or investigation. So those are the areas that we're working across. Um, we're more advanced. We've completed nine of our commitments um, and should have the rest done in a year. But it also speaks to the culture. It's not about new rules and processes. It's about fewer priorities. It's about exposure to um, where we're going in terms of contracting, where we need contracts, discussions about what we can do internally. So it also um, is happening at the level of the culture of the organization. Thanks very much for that. And I, you know, I always wonder about the, the role of the procurement directorate. I mean, in a recent article, we found that uh, uh, the the organizations or the, the companies that uh, the, the conservatives are really going after to trying to connect to corruption and to the liberal government were actually brought in by the, the Harper conservative government. So, like, you know, 13 years ago and have then continued the, the process. So, so perhaps you can maybe shed some light on, on what is the role of the procurement directorate at the CBSA and, and how new is this and, and how does this uh, go beyond governments of the day? And is there actual corruption that's happening here by, by ministers or by the prime minister? Um, so the procurement group has always existed. It existed in a smaller form, and as I've testified, it, exi it existed um, in a way that they were not the point person on all of the procurements. So that's changed. And they're there to assist their colleagues who have to get their work done. Um, and sometimes getting the work done requires outside, um, outside contractors, whether it's because we don't need that um, skill set uh, in an ongoing way that we can't recruit that skill set um, or that we need uh, specialized resources for a limited period of time. So they they work with um, their areas across the department to determine what it is that needs to be delivered, determine whether procurement is necessary, and if so, what's the best way to carry out that procurement and obviously be a liaison with PSPC um, when those procurements are being uh, Thank you very led much. Led by that department. Madame Cicla de Gagné pour deux minutes trente secondes, s'il vous plaît. Ms. Cicla de Gagné, thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Ms. Uh, Gordon, this question is for you. 
We listened to your testimony. There's been a number of questions. I don't think it's a matter of which documents you'll be submitting to the RCMP, but uh, when you appeared before the committee a number of months ago, you were very clear about the fact that your role now was to look forward, but also to tidy things up at the CBSA and ensure that uh, a RIVCAN, an event like this, an incident like this, would never occur again. And what I'm observing today and you've heard this yourself, is that the number of employees of the CBSA that clearly violated the basic code of conduct and they still hold their positions and they've been promoted, not just Mr Opelma and Mr Lausanne, but others. They've uh, had problematic uh, conduct, to put it uh, uh, mildly. So there have been a couple of uh, employees that were suspended, but apart from that, you don't seem to have tidied up shop very much. So there's two issues. One, it's the ongoing work of the Professional Integrity Division and what they are examining based on the documents that have come forth um, o over the course of uh, the, the past couple of years. And so I have made it clear to them that I want, I have expectations that they will deliver high quality and as fast as is reasonably possible. And so through the course of looking back they will come to um, decisions and recommendations regarding what they've found. They will work with human resources colleagues who, you know, when, when an investigation is completed and if it's founded, then the next step is to determine whether there's any mitigating factors and take appropriate Perfect. discipline. And they have a grid that can compare discipline um, for Merci. various... Thank you, thank you. Perfect. Now... Could you submit the report to the committee? We know that the findings are of great interest to us because it ha they have to do with uh, what's occurring at the CBSA in the wake of the Auditor General's report. Could, could you share those findings with us and tell us when you will be sharing them with us? So I referred to ongoing investigations, so I don't have a document or a report. I have previously expressed that... Um, you know, these are internal examinations of, of employee but behavior and conduct. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I'm asking you a direct question. We and the public, taxpayers who are paying your employees' wages, want to know what's going to happen to those employees that uh, lack judgment, that broke the rules and that uh, wasted taxpayers' money. Folks want to know, as president of the CBSA, how are you going to get... Canadians and Quebecers those answers? A few things there. Um, I, I, you know, there's the issue of hospitality and is there a link to wasting taxpayers' money there? I'm not sure. There's a, a values and ethics issue at play that we will be looking at with employees who have um, engaged uh, contrary to the code of conduct. But I don't, um, and I said previously that we are looking... Could you please respond directly to my question? Sorry, your time has run out. But I'm just asking for an answer, Mr Chairperson. I didn't get an answer to my question. Well, you'll have a, another round. But, Mr Chair, I didn't get an answer. Uh, for two and a half minutes, please. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Mr. Utano provided oversight of a budget that he was responsible for, which is $54.5 million at the CBSA, in addition to overseeing 66 contractors. Are there any internal or external reviews into the $54.5 million a year budget and the 66 contractors that Mr. Utano oversaw, especially in light of the fact that he pushed for specific contractors, including P KPMG? So... Um, your reference to the $54 million budget, can you just tell me where that comes from? Well, I believe it came from, the, from his operating accounts for the total amounts that were approved for GC Strategies, for example, and other contractors from a total fund of $54.5 million. It could be more. Maybe you have more information on missing documents. So I guess I'm. Suggest to us apologies. That, my, my question is: the case, is the 54 the million general... in reference to the cost that has been um, put out for a RIVCAN? So of the total amounts that we were able to obtain from the documents provided to the Auditor General, um, in addition to an affidavit that was submitted, 
that cites $54.5 million at the CBSA. The question is not so much on the amount, but on the accountability and transparency of that fund, particularly as noted in the affidavit, um, or even just the overseeing of the 66 contractors. So I apologize, what, what are you looking for? So in an affidavit that was submitted, in a lawsuit, he submitted the fact that he was responsible for $54.5 million in addition to overseeing 66 contractors. Uh, it's the affidavit from the lawsuit against the CBSA. You're probably familiar. Are you familiar with the, uh, are you aff- ver- uh, the lawsuit between, against the CBSA? Is that the federal court? Um, yes. Yes. In that, have you reviewed the affidavit? Uh, not personally, no. I see. In relation to the affidavit, it submitted that he was responsible for $54.5 million at the CBSA, in addition to overseeing 66 contractors. My question is, given this information, whether you're just receiving this information now or in previous, is there any internal or external investigations or reviews into okay. that specific responsibility? Um, I don't know what we would review there. Um, I, Conflicts I think, of interest, fraud, corruption. So that's certainly part of what I would expect um, our investigators to be looking at. I don't think they would break their work down by budget. I guess that's where I'm struggling with the question. So they well, are looking. The contractors I'm afraid, Mr. Digley, I'm, I'm afraid that is the time. I do plan to give you another round. Turning out to Mr. Barrett, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the dinner at Lansdowne. What was the venue? I believe, Mr. Chai, it was Joey's. Okay. Uh, what, what date did this happen? I apologize, Mr. Chai. I do not have the exact date. I can provide it to you. Please do. How many people were there? If I recall correctly, maybe five people, Mr. Chair. Five to, between five and ten people. Who? Who were they? I was there, Uh, Mr. Firth was there, Mr. Uh, His partner, I forget his name, Mr. Anthony, I believe, was there, Uh, Mr. Utana was there. I don't recall if Mr. McDonald was there, but he may have been, Uh, and some other uh, team members, uh, contractors like Mr. Murphy, and um, that's about the number of people I can remember, sir. Mr. Murphy's a contractor with which or with, with whom? He was one of the subcontractors through GC Strategies. Was uh, Mindone there? No, sir. And uh, what was for dinner? I believe I had a burger and there was appetizers, whatever Joey's food was. What about drinks? People Cocktail. had drinks. Beer, wine, mixed drinks, soda? I, I had a beer. Okay. Um, and what did you say the discussions were about? You said it was about the work of, like, the day-to-day of ArriveCan. Yes, yeah, so it was, we were working long hours, and we were talking. My conversation was mostly about, about you know, the, the challenges of, of implementing ArriveCan from a technical point of view. So what would Mr. Anthony and Mr. Firth have contributed to those conversations? Because... They don't do any technical work. They, they, they bill, and they build more than 1,500 times. So their business is, their business is contracting. It's, it's not IT work. So the, the, uh, there, there was no grind. The, you know, you talk about the, that, you know, you talked about the grind of, of ArriveCan, but for GC Strategies, there was no grind. It was only grift. And so their business was, was drumming up more business. It wasn't about programming. So what would their contributions to those discuss? If you're talking about programming, you know, I'm not a programmer. If someone started into a conversation with me about programming, um, uh, they might as well be speaking you know, a, 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 a language I don't understand, uh, literally, in that case. Mr. Chair, absolutely. I, I didn't have much conversations with Mr. Firth or Mr. Anthony about, about programming. I was mostly speaking with the team members that I was working with. Okay, so so who were? Well, there's only five of you, and so and so and 
two of them are Christian Firth and Darren Anthony. So did they just talk to themselves? They, 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 so who organized this dinner? I believe it was Mr. Firth. Mr. Firth organized it. Did anyone talk to him? Other than greetings and offhand conversations about how life is, we didn't speak, I didn't speak to him specifically. Well, that, that, so we've got five people sitting at a table. The host invites the, 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 the three government employees, or sorry, two government employees, uh, a subcontractor of GC Strategies and the two principals of GC Strategies, and the government employees don't speak to the, to the dinner hosts uh, at, at, at a table of five people. We're not talking, this room has a very long format. It's, it would be lost on people who are uh, maybe watching this webcast that, uh, that um, for, uh, for uh, different reasons, this room is set up in a very, with a very long table. Five people sitting at a table at Joey's Seafood is uh, a little bit more intimate than that. Um, but to not talk about the, the, the only business that GC Strategies does, that seems a bit incredible. You'd agree that that sounds, that we've got this, we've got this, this dinner, drinks are flowing, uh, um, we've got uh, contractors of the government, subcontractors of the government, um, you know, taking people out and no one's talking to them. That, that, that doesn't sound believable. Do you think that sounds believable? Mr. Chair, I apologize if I said no one talked to them. No one talked to them about coding. We were talking about people's lives, people, their day-to-day -day, uh, family issues as if it was a social gathering. We did not talk specifically, absolutely, did not talk about any contracting issues or any So five people who matters. only have a Rive can in common get to sit down in a bar and... Question, Mr. Barrett. And they didn't talk about a Rive can. They talked about kids' soccer schedules. If anything about we talked about Arrive Can was about the challenges of implementing Arrive Can. Because they're not Thank you very much. Uh, we're going back to Ms. Shanahan for five minutes, please. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. And uh, again, I'd like to thank the witnesses for being here today. Uh, Chair, I'm hearing a little bit of noise. Uh, is the, are the interpreters okay? Move the microphone again. Let me just check. Oh, no. Yeah, you're correct. I'm getting a thumbs down for a second. So I have paused yeah. the, the clock. Maybe say a few words, Miss uh, Shannon. Yes, I, I think it has something to do. I have to take my glasses on and off, and I think that moves the... Uh, uh, the microphone or the boom there around. We so, are, uh, we apologies. are, yeah. we're good. I'm seeing smiles from the interpreter. So back to you, please. I'll resume the clock. Well, well, very good. So uh, again, uh, I'd like to thank um, especially Ms. Uh, O'Gorman for uh, being here today and, and answering um, all the questions that uh, members have uh, been putting to her. Uh, but Chair, I think you'll agree that uh, our um, committee, public accounts, uh, uh, has uh, uh, a lot of important work to do. Yes, Arrive can, and we've had multiple meetings. I think we're, we're over 15, 16, 17 meetings on Arrive can. Uh, uh, but we also have other work to do in reviewing the Auditor General's reports, and as well as getting out uh, some of our uh, draft reports from previous studies. Uh, but our work plan has been changed uh, many times on multiple occasions uh, with short notice and without consultation uh, with all members. And so uh, therefore, Chair, I move the following motion that given that the Chair has yet to table a subcommittee report for subcommittee approval, in relation to the committee's future business, it be agreed that, number one, the committee dedicate its meeting on May 21st to follow up on the committee's recommendations, i.e. spring cleaning. Two, the committee dedicate its meeting on May 23rd to witness testimony from officials on report six, Canadian Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act 2030 Emissions Reduction Plan. The committee dedicate its meeting on May 28th to consideration of draft reports. The committee dedicate its meeting on May 30th to witness testimony on report one, Arrive Can. 
The committee dedicate its regular meeting on June 4th to witness testimony on report two, housing in First Nations community. And as six, the committee dedicate its meeting on June 6th in the first hour to the appearance of Minister Bill Blair on report one, arrive can, and the second hour to the appearance of Minister Patty Haidu on report two, housing in First Nations community communities and that the chair table reports from the subcommittee on agenda and procedure at the next committee meeting for approval by the committee. Chair, I believe that um, a, a, a document, uh, the text has been sent in both English and French uh, to the clerk. And uh, I propose if you want to suspend if while uh, members look at that, yep. uh, but I, I, I am certainly uh, able to speak to the motion. Yep. Mr. Jenners, I see I'm going to come right back to you. I just want to have a, just a quick word with the, with the, uh, the clerk here for a second. One sec, please. Uh, thank you. I see. I see hands up, um, uh, Miss Shanahan. Um, so we're not in committee business uh, currently. Uh, your motion certainly is is noted, um, with a small edit from the uh, clerk, which I will get to at the appropriate time. So uh, you're welcome to bring this up when we get to committee business after hearing from the witnesses. So. For the this is this is not a matter at hand uh, motion, so I will rule it out of order. So we can get back to our witnesses and then come back to committee business as per the schedule. Point of, point of order, chair. With with all due respect, I challenge that decision. That this is what we that do. that is uh, that is your certainly your right to do it, and I will it no. Uh, it, she, so technically, you're right, Mr. Barrett. You cannot move a, a motion or point of order, but. Uh, as the move of the motion, she does have the floor to, to respond to me. So, Ms. Shanahan, just, just say I challenge the chair without the point of order. I challenge the chair. Very good. All right. Um, a roll call, please. Yeah. Thank you very much.
And perhaps just explain that this is this yes, is. I yes, I will. I yeah. will read it out. I just need one moment. Uh, she's still here. But okay. Shall the decision of the chair be sustained, Mr. Aria? No. Ms. Bradford. No. Ms. Kavid. No. Ms. Shanahan. No. Ms. Yip. No. Mr. Nader. Yes. Mr. Barrett. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Maxime Bl Monsieur Blanchet Janka. Oui. Mr. Desjardins. I think it's Miss Blaney. Oh, Miss Blaney, my apologies. Should you be this up there? Um, yes. I vote no. Six nays. Four yeas. Very good. Uh, I'm just going to uh, suspend for just uh, three minutes and then come back and then I'll recognize uh, speakers. Change, but I'm looking for a friendly amendment, a uh, friendly change on you so we don't have to have a uh, an amendment to it, and that is to, um, so as you know, I give the clerk discretion to work with witnesses on their availability. Um, the clerk informs me that on May 23rd, we have a secured transportation in place of the net zero, and the net zero study will be on June the 6th. So with your permission, we'd like to swap that on your motion. Um, and you're, you're signaling to me no. No, because uh, June the 6th, we already have, we know how difficult it is to uh, get confirmation of ministers, and it's very important uh, okay. to the members. Uh, so uh, I suggest, I and, and I think we, we go into uh, uh, Later in June. Um, your your I, I see. So your motion is actually proposing yeah. we we bump the study on June the sixth, um, uh, and have Minister Hyju in. Uh, it, we have both uh, Minister Bill Blair yes. and Minister Hyju. Correct. Uh, on June six. Okay. Then could my amendment to your mo could could my time. amendment yeah. to your motion be then that instead of the net zero study on May 23rd, that it be the Transport Canada study. Both, I'll just point out, were uh, priorities of government members. So you're, I'm, I'm looking for your permission to swap one of your studies for another. Well, we can, we can have an alternate date then for uh, the uh, Can Canadian net zero emissions as long as we, we can say uh, that that takes place before uh, June uh, 2020th at that meeting. Uh, to the best of the ability, I, I'm going to uh, look for some uh, appropriate uh, uh, wording. Uh, but I think it's, you know, we understand that that's normally how it happens, that it's on a best efforts basis. Uh, so, um, yes, yeah, so I think that uh, part of uh, that friendly amendment, which I believe you know, has to be proposed uh, by, by someone, if maybe we can see the wording on that, would be to, um, on a best efforts uh, basis, or indeed, uh, let's say that it, uh, it uh, must be scheduled, because I, I... Okay, no, no, I'm, I'm I, no, 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 uh, if you want to extend your motion and move it, uh, another date, mm -hmm. you're going to have to make that amendment. I'm looking for your permission. No. I'm looking for your permission to schedule national trade corridors on June 23rd, May because uh, pardon me, on May 23rd, because that is where the clerk has lined up the witnesses. Yes or no? Uh, not without a guarantee that we have. This uh, is no. I'm not making a no, Miss Shannon. You can point, pa point of order, Chair? hold on, Miss Kelly, Miss Miss Shannon. You're not negotiating with me for an expanded motion. You've tabled your motion. You can come with a sub-amendment. Hold on, Ms. Khalid. You can come back and propose another date, 
but I'm not in a position to, to expand your motion. I'm asking for a clerical change um, as per what the, the clerk's reporting to me to do the transportation on June 23rd. Yes, Ms. Khalid, you have a point of order. Thanks, Chair. Um, two points. Uh, one, I believe that uh, Ms. Shanahan cannot amend her own motion. And secondly, I do believe that you, as Chair, need unanimous consent in order to move a motion to amend uh, any motion on the floor as well. So just uh, a friendly reminder, yeah, Chair. Well, I'm, I'm looking for Ms. Shanahan's uh, agreement, so I don't have it from her. Obviously, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, so, Ms. Shanahan, do you, you want to accept my, accept my through the, the clerk through me change to put to put uh, transportation on May 23rd. Uh, if the answer is no, we'll just open up the, the debate on the, on the motion and we can deal with the, the consequences later. Well, it, indeed, I, I can't uh, do that in good faith uh, without knowing that uh, we will have the uh, report six. So maybe other mem uh, members can put forward um, what I would call friendly, uh, uh, sure. friendly uh, amendments. Okay. So, uh, and it, that can be from any member, um, including from the uh, Liberal side. So okay, I, J I, just watch I, your, your microphone, he's giving us a little, a little feedback, so, okay. Um, mm. All right, I had, a li I had previously said, uh, and I see hands going up, um, Mr. Genuis, you had had signal prior to my suspension, you'd like the floor. Are you with us to take that? If not, I'll move. Mr. Mr. Genuis, are you are you ready to? Chair, Chair I am here, but uh, I think Mr. Nader was going to make the comments I was going to make, so uh, happy to hand it over to him. Uh, very briefly, Mr. Chair, I mean, this is obviously eating into time that uh, uh, we could hear testimony, damning testimony, I would say, from, uh, from the Canada Border Services Agency. Um, this is really um, just reconfirming what was done in our subcommittee, in which you, as Chair, have been directed to to undertake. So I'm, I'm really don't see why uh, this is being brought forward at this point, um, especially since we have uh, committee business scheduled immediately following our, our, um, our, our testimony. So I, I would move that we adjourn the debate and hear from the witnesses um, on CBSA on the damning Arrive Can uh, report. I, I cannot uh, adjourn uh, debate on a motion uh, unless you're signaling you're supporting it, in which case you just want to. Well, if, if everyone's ready to deal with it right now, let's go. Otherwise, I adjourn debate and we, uh, I move that we adjourn debate and uh, hear from our witnesses. All right. Um, Mr. Nader has called that we adjourn debate on the motion. Please call the roll call clerk. And so the, as the clerk's getting ready, this is to adjourn the debate now. We go back to the witnesses, and then we go into committee business and can pick things up again there. Clerk? Shall the motion of Mr. Nader carry? Mr. Aria? No. Ms. Bradford? No. Ms. Khalid? No. Ms. Shanahan? No. Ms. Yip? No. Mr. Nader? Yes. Mr. Brock? Yes. Mr. Barrett? Yes. Mr. Blanchet Jonca? Oh. Uh, Ms. Blaney? No. Six nays, four yeas. Very good. Ms. Khalid, you have the floor. Uh, thanks very much, Chair. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Look, Chair, I have been quite clear over the past uh, number of months that I have uh, had the, uh, the honour of, of being part of this committee. We can do things in two ways. We can have a collaborative approach as to how we are going to, to run our committee, or we can have a, a not so collaborative approach where, uh, you know, like we, we try to find gotcha moments, we try to find clips, we try to, uh, to bring in matters from other committees into ours. And to be quite frank, and, you know, like I, I really take points from uh, Ms. Shanahan, who I, I learn from a lot because she's been a veteran of this committee. So that's not the role of, of what this committee is. Chair, you've had the opportunity to table uh, subcommittee reports. We have a rolling work plan. And the fact that we are sitting here 
in our constituencies, the majority of us, trying to balance the support for our constituents while also trying to make sure that we're doing the important work in Ottawa. It's very difficult. I have constituents who, who I have had to cancel meetings with um, because I get to see your lovely face, Chair. And I am, uh, I, I, my constituents are, are, are annoyed by that. And I think that we have had so many opportunities to come together, to build work plans, to say, okay, committee, we are all on the same page here. We all want to work together. Here is what and how we are going to, to govern ourselves over the next couple of months. And you have had so many opportunities, Chair, to do that. And again and again and again, we see that things change on the fly. In fact, in our last meeting in Ottawa on Thursday, you had given indication that we would be having a committee meeting on Thursday Sorry, Ms. of Ms. this week. May, may I interrupt? I am Ms. speaking to the motion, Chair. No, no you're not, okay, actually. Okay. No, no, you're actually not. Um, uh, the motion is about the schedule. Um, Indeed. And, and I, I, will, I will quote to you, Chair, the, the language of the motion. Given that the Chair has yet to table a subcommittee report for the committee's approval in relation to the committee's future business, it is agreed that... So what I am talking about is, unfortunately, your failure to table subcommittee reports, to come up with a, a workable work plan, and to, unfortunately, um, preempt the committee. You, you had given indication that you would have call a committee meeting on Thursday, and yet here we are on Tuesday for a three-hour meeting, which I am more than happy to, to discuss, but Chair... Sure. We need to have a work plan, and that is what this motion is really all about. It's about creating that work plan and holding you to account, Chair, because quite frankly, every single member on this committee has the same objectives. The Public Accounts Committee has a very, very clear mandate that we are all in agreement with. And the fact that that work plan keeps changing, the fact that we get duped every single time on when committee meetings are going to happen, when they're not going to happen, what the agenda is, who the witnesses are, constant amended notices of meeting has led us to this point where we are now putting forward a motion to say, hey, Chair, if you're not going to do your job, let committee members come together and point do of order, Chair. for you. Point of order, Chair. I have a point of order, Ms. Khalid. Yes, Mr. Barrett. Uh, thank oh, pardon you. me, Mr. Nader, pardon me. Th thank you, Chair. I would just remind uh, Ms. Khalid that it, uh, it is in our standing orders not to speak disrespectfully of the Chair. Um, the position of Chair is an uh, important position, and we have faith in our Chair. Thank and you. absolutely, Chair, I have faith in you, and I know that you can do the right thing. I am not speaking ill of you. I am just calling out what has happened over these past number of months that I have been a member of this committee to try to bring some order to this committee. And, Chair, I know that you're trying to do your best. I know how difficult it is for the clerks to find witnesses, to, to fill in the schedules, etc. But... The fact that we keep amending our meetings, the fact that we keep calling unexpected meetings, it is difficult. The meeting here today has cost taxpayers over $10,000. Can you imagine $10,000 for three hours in which we could have been supporting our constituents and had this in our sitting week? So what I'm trying to say to you, Chair, is that this motion is a proposition as to how we are going to conduct ourselves over the next coming weeks. And we have five long weeks in Ottawa where we are going to be able to do all of the work that is on your agenda, that is on all of our members' agenda. We just need some kind of decorum. We just need some kind of ability to have, uh, to have certainty in, in not only our own schedules, but in the schedules of our constituents too. So that when they schedule meetings to come and see me, for example, that I don't have to cancel on them on the last minute just so I can appear here. 
So, Chair, I, I, I submit that to you. I am very much in support of this motion, and, and I'm hopeful that members of our committee are also, because what this motion does is that it gives us clarity, it gives us concrete work plan, which we have been waiting for for a very, very long time, for months, in fact, and a work plan that keeps changing and keeps fidgeting around with. And here we are in a surprise meeting on Tuesday, um, I, I, for, I, I don't know why we are, we are doing this, but I'm hopeful that this, uh, that this motion brings uh, concreteness and stability to our committee. And again, Chair, I respect the work that you do, and I look forward to continuing to work with you, and I'm hoping in a more collaborative way than, than we have so far. And I'll leave my remarks there, Chair, and I look forward to, to continuing with this debate. Thank you. Uh, next, Ms. Yip. Um, yes, um, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, this motion was brought about because we want some certainty about a work plan. And as my colleague, Ms. Khalid, has brought up, we, we never know um, what the plan is. The, the emails keep coming uh, from the clerk, amend. And, and so forth. And so there's so many changes. It's just we would all like to have everybody agree on um, a, a work plan that works for everyone. So I would uh, really like to also remind um, the chair that we still have some outstanding reports to look at. Um, I think it's about six or seven. And um, some of them date back to 2022, and I really think that we do need to get back to it. Um, but that being said, I'd like to propose a friendly amendment that um, that we uh, um, dedicate the meeting um, for May 23rd to witness testimony from officials on um, the report for National Trade Quarters Fund Transport Canada. And uh, June 11th to the uh, the uh, the environmental report. Um, sorry, I, I just need to, uh, um, a moment to get the right wording of that. Uh, oh, it's it's Report Six, Canadian Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. All right. I'll just see if the clerk is that uh, clear. She said yes. She actually made an amendment. Yes. I, well, I, I took it. You're moving. You're moving an amendment to Miss Shanahan's motion that we will study uh, report four trade corridors on May twenty third, and we will study. Report six, Canadian net zero emissions on June the 11th. That's correct. Discussion on that or should we call a vote? Let's call. We're all accepted as a friendly amendment. I still, I, uh, looking, looking then for, uh, for discussion or UC on that? Hearing no, hearing no uh, opposition, that is passed. Uh, back to the, uh, the, uh, discussion, Ms. Shanahan, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Chair, and I appreciate uh, the uh, friendly amendment brought forward uh, by my colleague, uh, because indeed it's the uh, the kind of uh, uh, accommodation that uh, we can uh, normally expect in this uh, committee. Uh, where uh, members discuss either in the subcommittee or in committee business and usually in, in camera uh, what the work plan is uh, going to be going forward so that, that there's some uh, 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 clarity and certainty in uh, the work that we have to do because we all take it very seriously and uh, we want to be prepared. And Chair, you know, I have to say that uh, last Thursday we had uh, committee business in public for uh, 
uh, an hour where we discussed at great length uh, a Thursday meeting uh, that we would be having um, this week uh, without any uh, clarity as to uh, who the witnesses that were going to be called. And in fact, um, uh, members on the Liberal side found out that um, uh, other members had uh, prior knowledge on the Conservative side had prior knowledge about um, whether or not witnesses would be able to uh, attend, and that was shown by a motion. Miss Miss Shannon, I'm going to uh, first of all, Miss Shannon, that was put to bed. Second, um, just uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. You, you appeared to have advanced knowledge of Mr. Hyju's availability um, in a few weeks that I'm aware of and the clerk's aware of, but no other members are, are aware of. So back to you. Let's not go down that road. Please, please speak to your, your motions and, and, uh, and, and save your skullduggery. Uh, in, indeed, uh, Chair, uh, and I, I hope that you're not impugning any uh, motions, any motives. You, on you were the one doing that, Ms. Shanahan. That, uh, back to you. <laughs> Well, Chair, you know, again, this is why uh, we have these discussions uh, normally in a um, uh, uh, in-camera meeting uh, where, uh, you know, members can um, uh, speak freely, uh, share information and so on. But for some reason, uh, well, not for just some reason, because of uh, really uh, weeks and months of um, frankly, uh, uh, some members not uh, being able to uh, have full access uh, to uh, all uh, information that was made available to other members for multiple changes to a work plan, uh, the work plan not being sent out on a timely basis, um, a subcommittee uh, report not being submitted to the committee for approval, uh, and so then being subject to change after the subcommittee has spent a considerable time uh, uh, working on it. And so uh, this, is, um, this is why uh, I am presenting uh, not only this motion, but I'm very happy to receive the uh, friendly amendment that has been put forward today. And I'm looking forward to some very constructive work. Uh, by this committee uh, in uh, the weeks to come, and I will leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Arya, you have the floor, floor please. Uh, just a short comment, Chair. I'm not a regular member of this committee, but I was in this committee during 2015-2019 when I was first elected uh, with uh, Conservative Kevin Sorensen as the chair, and uh, we had NDP member David Christopherson, who was a very active member of the committee. Uh, I fondly recall those four years when uh, the committee worked very well. In fact, uh, the entire four years, there was not a single dissent report, uh, dissenting report uh, from any of us. We had the majority then. And uh, I should say, it appears the things have changed now. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, another thing, uh, Chair, in fact, uh, before our committee in 2015, the departments used to send different levels of officers to the committee, but we put our foot down and made insisted that uh, the deputy ministers themselves be available uh, for every single meeting. And we enforced it, though it was our government uh, at our insistence on the liberal side uh, that uh, we made sure that uh, the deputy ministers appeared on behalf of the department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Ms. Bradford, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I'd like to speak in favor of the motion and as amended uh, with a friendly amendment. Um, you know, as a new MP, I know that we have two roles. In our, one is our parliamentary duties, which take place here in Ottawa. And the other, equally important, if not more so, is our duty to our constituents back home. And uh, this time of year, we have very few weeks dedicated to that. In fact, this is our final week here in the constituency until the House rises on June 21st. So consequently, we have a lot of meetings booked here, often quite a bit in advance. The schedule is very jammed. So I reiterate the comments made uh, previously uh, by Ms. Khalid and Ms. Shanahan. You know, we get these things booked, and then all of a sudden, they're upended, and we have to cancel on our constituents. It sends a very poor message. Um, 
so this week, I mean, with the Rive Can, we've had, I don't know, I've lost track, probably 17 meetings on this. And I think half of them have happened during constituency weeks, which should not happen. And now we're to the point where we're calling witnesses we've previously heard from. And they don't really have anything new to add. Last Thursday, you said that we were going to have a meeting on Thursday. So I had to, you know, get coverage, which was difficult. Miss 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 Bradford, just okay. to, just a gen. This is this is not about the motion. This is about not wanting to sit it's in the recess week. The Back need, to you. I'm sorry, Chair. It's about the need for the motion. And I'm sorry this motion is necessary, but it's become quite evident over the past, you know, couple of months that with these unexpected meetings that happen during constituent weeks, we need a program. We need a plan so that we can be prepared. We need to know who the witnesses are, when they're coming, so that we can prepare, so that we have some good, valid, relevant questions. That's what we're trying to accomplish here, Mr. Chair. And so I think that this plan... uh, And we need to stick to it. We need, by passing this motion, to say, this is our work plan, and we won't be altering it. The the witnesses will be lined up, and we won't be having any extra things added on that are going to disrupt this work program because we have, you know, reports that we need to table and get done uh, so that we look like we're effectively conducting the work that we're elected to do. And uh, we need to get on with it. And, and our, our wish is that this brings some structure and clarity that I feel has been missing with all these additional things that have disrupted and pushed, pushed our reports back so we don't get things tabled in the House. And it's just so that we have some structure and advanced knowledge of what's coming up, who the witnesses will be, and so that we can proceed on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Khalid. Uh, thank you uh, very much, Mr. Chair. And um, you know, I just want to uh, add uh, on to what my colleagues have said, but also to kind of expand on all of the points that this motion outlines. So, you know, when we talk about uh, kind of a spring cleaning, there's there's a lot that's on the plate of, um, of, of the Public Accounts Committee's agenda. Uh, there's a lot that has been pending and, you know, like I know that um, our, our last meeting was in camera, so I can't go into details about uh, specifically what was uh, edited or discussed in, in reports, um, but I, I do recall just being alarmed at having to, to change dates given how much reports have been delayed and, and pushed back um, because of uh, of calling and recalling and recalling and recalling the same witnesses again and again and again. So uh, I think uh, point uh, one is very, very necessary that we definitely need to have a, a spring cleaning of, of what is on our agenda and, and how we are going to conduct ourselves going forward. I think having that conversation is going to really clear up and hopefully prioritize and triage kind of what uh, what is on our plate and and what we need to get done as soon as possible for point two um the the dedicated uh, meeting for may 23rd from officials on report six the the canadian uh, net zero emissions accountability act 2030 emissions reduction plan i think that's something that canadians are really wanting to wanting to, to hear about and hear from that report uh, is, is a significant one in terms of the climate today. We are about to go into um, a, a significant fire season where we are going to see a lot of forest fires over the summer. We are going to have multiple conversations about what climate change means to all of us and, and how we as a government and how we as specifically as public accounts committee is going to, uh, to ensure uh, that we are holding government to account in terms of what the uh, what the action plan is with the net zero uh, emissions, and I think that this report is very important for us to get on the radar and and tabled in the house, and we do need to discuss it as a committee. So, again, a very very important uh, thing to be included in this motion. The third point uh, is consideration of draft reports. As I had alluded to earlier, Chair, there is so 
many <laughs> reports that we just have not gotten to, that we should be getting to. Uh, in fact, we've had to amend some of these reports based on the, the delay. And I think that it is so important for us to get these draft reports tabled because the work of the Auditor General is important. The work of this committee is important. And if we are just holding on to all of these reports, then how are we going to further the work that we're trying to do? How are we going to further the recommendations that we are proposing based on the Auditor General, based on what we've heard in this committee? I think sitting on them is doing a disservice to our committee uh, and to, to Canadians as well. So I really think that's an important part of, of this motion as well. And, you know, as, as Chair, you've indicated that the ARRIVE CAN is very, very important. Um, you know, this motion also speaks to that to say that the May 30th um, meeting be dedicated to witness testimony on Report 1 on our can, Because we do care, Chair, about what you think, about what all members of this committee think, and, and what impacts and what is important to Canadians. And so including this as part of the report, uh, as part of the plan, the work plan for, for the next couple of months, I think is very important. Because I, for one, and I've said this on the record so many times, I'm so disappointed with how a RIFE CAN happened. I can't believe how much money we spent on this. And I think it is important for us to put out that final report on what exactly happened here and how we are going to reconcile the 13 years, 13 years, Chair, of, of a government who, uh, uh, of multiple governments who, who have had challenges with contracting. And I think Arrive Can is, is a good example of how we can do that. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, on the First Nation, the housing uh, uh, issue with, with First Nations, I know uh, Mr. Desjardins has been very, very um, uh, uh, vigilant on and ensuring that we, we speak about this. And I know that our government has had a lot of, uh, a lot of interventions on this as well and, and a lot of work. And I think that's another really, really good thing for us to talk about and, and ensure that this is uh, triaged and prioritized in what we do from today until we rise uh, end of June. So I, again, really think this is important. And again, like with the two ministers, Minister Blair and Minister Haidu, uh, they do need to appear because that is the will of the committee. We have we've passed motions accordingly. We have we have talked about this and collaborated this. Uh, and so it is difficult, uh, as, as members have said, to get the agenda of uh, uh, and the, the time from ministers. So if we have those times confirmed, uh, I think it would be really helpful uh, for us to to be able to schedule that in and and to make sure that uh, that we are getting them on the record for a lot of the issues that we have been discussing in this committee. So, uh, Chair, I, I have talked point by point on uh, on all of the issues that uh, that have been raised uh, in this motion, and I'm really hopeful that you yourself and and all members of this committee can support this work plan because, quite frankly, we have yet to see a workable work plan or any work plan to be quite frank um, over the past couple of months so we're just trying to propose something that would be helpful that uh, that would help guide this committee and and give uh, some kind of order uh, and prioritization and triaging to, to how this committee operates uh, so uh, I'll stop there chair and I look forward to to a positive vote on this thanks thank you clerk call the roll call please Shall the motion of Ms. Shanahan, as amended, be adopted? Ms. Bradford. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. Mr. Aria. Yes. Ms. Khalid. Yes. Ms. Shanahan. Or is it Ms. Sidhu? Yes. Ms. Yip. Yes. Mr. Nader. Yes. Mr. Brock. Yes. Mr. Barrett. Yes. Monsieur Blanchet Jonca. Oh. Ms. Blaney. Yes. Ten yeas. Thank you all for ratifying with a slight amendment the work plan that had been sent to you all. <laughs> Going back to our witnesses, Mr. Brock, you have the floor.
Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. O'Gorman, uh, you appeared uh, at OGO, this OGO committee on October 24th, 2023. You informed this committee before your appearance at that meeting, you visited the PCO at 80 Wellington at 2 p.m. You then attended the OGO committee at 3.30 p.m. And the next morning, visited AD Wellington again, the PCO's office. This is all pursuant to your uh, calendar. Did you meet with PMO officials? No. Did you meet with PCO officials? I don't know the specific um, meeting that you're talking about, but if I was at PCO, I, repeated, I would have ma ma been- I just repeated. I just repeated the meetings that you attended. October 24th, one hour before your committee appearance and the following your committee appearance on the 25th. So I'll ask again, did you meet with PMO officials on both of those dates? I would have to review my calendar. Um, I don't recall meeting in person with PMO officials um, for any meetings, but um, this is more than six months ago, so I guess if, if, Mr. Chair, if there's a specific question that the member wants to know, um, pointing out dates of meetings not, six months ago, um, I'm, I'm hard-pressed to... Uh, this is an important question, and we want an answer to it. Who at the PMO and the PCO office did you meet with before and after your appearance at the OGO committee? I would have to review my calendar. I don't have it in front of me. And you'll provide this committee with all of those names in the PMO office that you met with and the PCO office you met with. So Mr. Chair, yeah. the member is stating talk? as a fact Ms. that I met with yeah, PMO. Just, I have not agreed to any facts. Just, so please let that yeah, be clear. Let, let, I, just, I stopped the clock, Mr. Brock. So just there, there's, there's a request for information. I believe Ms. O'Gorman said she would check her schedule I just wanted to clarify that. I just wanted to double check. I don't want to put words in your mouth. So, the member has my schedule. So, if if the um, people aren't listed, I can see if I can go in and find that. But um, I will take that back. Thank you very much, Mr. Brock. You have two Ms. minutes Agor fifty seconds. Back to you, Ms. O'Gorman. Did you talk about the arrive can issue? As I said, I don't recall those meetings. I don't have the information in front of me. I have spoken it's to funny. PCO. I'll stop you right there. Ms. Gorman, it is really funny that now, some several months removed, you have great difficulty remembering your attendance at the PCO and PMO's office. Yet when the question was put to you by myself at an earlier appearance, you remembered exactly attending. And you told us at that time that it was a mere coincidence that you were attending before your committee appearance and I'm now telling you that this is what you had said previously. So it's very coincidental, ma'am, that you can't remember now. So clearly this was about your appearance at committee and it was clearly about the arrive can study. Do you dispute that? I, I do. I absolutely dispute that. Your question was okay. not, did you meet with the Privy Council office or the Prime Minister's office before your appearance to discuss your appearance? Had that been the question, I would have said no. I have never met okay. with PMO with regards Mr. to Gorman. any of my... No, M Mr. Yeah, Chair, Mr. may Gorman. I finish my, my... time. May I finish? Mr. Gorman, this is my time. This is my oh, time. I, I believe there was a statement that was erroneous that I am fixing. If the question was, did I meet with the Prime Minister's right, order, office? Order, order, order. I think, Ms. Yip, I think I'm going to... Uh, why don't you... Ms. Yip, a point of order, which I think I'm going to preempt, but go ahead. I see your hand up. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, my point of order is um, uh, the witness should be allowed to answer and also that AD Wellington is the PCO, not PMO. Thank you. So um, uh, I just want to bring a little order. So uh, Ms. O'Gorman, um, well, well no, hold, hold on. I'm just, it's, I'm going to turn it back to Mr. Brock. This is his time um, and in this process with other questioning, if you, something you feel you haven't been able to answer, another member can certainly turn to you. But unfortunately, all members are on the clock. 
and they have discretion about how they would like to use that time. I know that can be frustrating, but I just want to clarify that. So, Mr. Brock, you have about a minute and a half. Over to you, please. So, Ms. O'Gorman, you are going to table all the names of all officials at the PMO office and the PCO office that you spoke to before and immediately after your committee meetings on this Arrive Can study. You are also going to give us details as to what you discussed, because I know there's an email from October of 2022 that the PCO was very interested in the Arrive Can study. You were CC'd and actually an email directed to you regarding that. So you wanted to provide information to the PCO on the Arrive Can study. I find it extremely suspicious, and I'm sure Canadians do not believe you, ma'am, when you say that it was merely a coincidence. Before and after your meeting with the PCO, you did not discuss your testimony, and you did not discuss the Arrive Can. So we'll wait for your information to be received. Now, the RCMP is investigating thousands of emails deleted by Min Doan a former employee of the CBSA. Have you been able to recover some of those emails, yes or no? The team is investigating the allegation. I don't think it's and been established have recovered, that... Have Mr. Recovered Chair? Have some of those emails? Yes or no? I, I don't believe it's been established that the emails were deleted. Have you recovered some of those emails that were not provided to the RCMP or the Auditor General? Have you since found and be able to recover some of those emails? I have not understood from neither the Auditor General nor the RCMP that they were not provided with emails that they were seeking. Ma'am, ma'am, there is point evidence. Order, no, uh, is sorry, evidence. Mr. I'll hear that point of order in a second. Mr. Brock, your, your time is up. I heard a point of order. Is that Ms. Khalid? Yes, yes. And that's pardon exactly me. the point. Mr. Brock was way over his time. Wait, wait, wait. Mr. Arya, you have the floor for five minutes, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Ms. O'Gorman, uh, in your testimony, you mentioned that uh, the approval, or you mentioned about the contracts, what more $40,000 need. Uh, is there a new procedure you mentioned? Yes. I've established governance that any contract at CBSA that is being um, renewed, extended, or established goes through a, a committee that's chaired by the executive uh, deputy head. The concerns that has been raised uh, due to this uh, arrive can scandal, uh, uh, you know, sometimes adding red tape, uh, it makes life difficult for various uh, departments to work. Uh, sometimes in an emergency, 40,000 is a big number, I understand, but in the bigger scheme of the things, sometimes works need to be get done quickly, sooner. Uh, so are you adding more red tape to the approval process? I don't see it as red tape. Um, I see it as visibility across the organization. The committee um, can meet quickly if there's a need, but I think what I'm trying to institute at CBSA is that these things don't come up at the last minute. And so if everything is in order, it's a short discussion and people proceed. You mentioned that uh, you are trying to reduce the consulting uh, footprint. Uh, that's important. I agree with that uh, because uh, over-reliance on uh, consultants uh, is not a good thing in the longer run. Uh, and you also mentioned that uh, you need uh, the transfer, the knowledge to the internal team. In fact, uh, every time a consultant is heard, a part of that should be where the knowledge of this external co contractor will go into the internal team so that the expertise will become available in-house as and when needed. Uh, obviously, it has not been happening for too a long a time. Uh, is it an informal way of, that uh, you are instituting it, or is there a formal way of doing this? Um, so I'll just, Mr. Chair, the previous question on the number of, of contracts. So in February of this year, we had 243 IT consultants working in CBSA, and as of May, we have 175. So I had undertook to get those numbers. Um, but we are... Uh, making a concerted effort to do a knowledge transfer and have a plan for all of the work that we are doing um, by virtue of having consultants there and what the long-term plan is. 
We will always have consultants. Um, it wouldn't be economical or feasible to hire uh, across the agency all of the depth of IT talent we need. Some people we need to come in quickly. Like I said, we have people who know computer languages um, that uh, don't really want to work for government. Um, they're retired. We need their expertise. So again, there too, we're looking in a quite a concerted way to be able to do a knowledge transfer and do that work ourselves. So Chair, I move to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll get the clerk to call the roll call on that, please.